everyone. Welcome to Florida by Christine. So today I'm going to talk about resin. Um, and I want to just let you guys know that I'm not like a professional resin person. You know, I'm not. I haven't used a bunch of different kinds. I've used one kind of resin. So um, just to, you know, if you guys ask me questions about how does this resin work and how does that resin work, I don't know. I only know how this resin works and this is from Stone Coat. There's a website, just look up Stone Coat Resin and um, this is the only one I've ever used and I like it a lot. It seems to be really easy to use. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, okay, so before I get started I just want to talk about um, some really important things. I have a little note here. Um, Whatever table that you're going to be resining on, make sure it's level. Okay, I've checked this table, uh, checked it up today. And because this stuff's self-leveling, and if it's not level, you know, it's not going to be good. So you, it's really important with resin that you have a level surface. Um, clean your canvas first. Okay, so I'm going to talk about prepping canvases real quick. Um, so... I, I leave the tape on from when I painted, okay? Um, I like to let it dry for, um, I mean, I do two weeks, but you're supposed to do three weeks. You know, I'm just saying, I'm not, you know, you're supposed to wait three weeks for it to fully cure because you want your paint to be 100% dry before you put resin on it, okay? But I've pushed the envelope and done two weeks and didn't notice anything bad happening, no bubbling or anything weird. Um, so, but the, the word on the street is three weeks. Okay. So the reason I like to leave tape on is because as it's dripping, it, you can wipe away underneath with your stick, popsicle stick, but then there'll be more drips underneath. Okay. And those drips, if you don't scrape them off and obviously you can't babysit them all night long, it takes, you know, about... 20 hours for it to dry. I, I do mine in the evening and then by tomorrow morning it's dry enough to touch, you know, for me to, you know, but it's it's definitely dry to touch. Again, not fully cured. That takes um, another, about I think a week before you're actually supposed to put it in the mail or anything like that because if you were to dig your nail into it, it will create a little scratch. So uh, resin takes a little bit to cure as well. So better safe than sorry. The longer you can wait, the better when it comes to letting your paint dry and um, your resin drying before you're going to mail it away so you sell a piece like that. Okay, so anyway, I like the big thumbtacks. These are not necessary, okay? But I like them. They're, they're just, they raise it higher off the table so you can kind of get those drips underneath. But speaking of drips, if there's drips, it's going to drip along where the blue tape is, and when you peel it away, you peel away those drips as well. So you don't have to stress over them too much. Um, so that's why I tape the back with resin, and I tape it already, and it gives you a really nice back. Because those drips actually get hard as a rock, and when you go to hang it on the wall, it's not flush to the wall because it's poking out. So yeah. <laughs> I did that once. I feel like I learned from making mistakes. That's how we all learn. But yeah, tape it off, peel off the drips, no problem. Okay, so paintings that I don't use um, silicone in. There's no silicone in this one, this one, um, but there are silicone in a few that I'm doing today in this one. You need to clean them first, okay? And you may, depending on what kind of silicone you use, you may have to clean them a couple of times, okay? Um, that's the biggest thing with resining uh, a cell or silicone painting is getting that oil off because resin and oil make these, it's kind of like a dip, okay? And everybody complains about it. But what happens is if you do get the dip, don't freak out. It just means you have to do a couple coats and maybe even three coats, but those dips will go away. Um, but it just takes a few times to get them to go away. And again, maybe a reason why I don't usually resin um, paintings with cells. But I have, and I've done it successfully, but like I said, two, three coats, you can pretty much expect to have to 
do that. But they look fantastic under resin, they really do. The way to clean it, and there's a lot of debate out there, a lot of people use cornstarch, a lot of people use baby powder first and they smear it onto the canvas. Um, for my cell paintings, some of them, not these, these dry pretty smooth, sometimes there's little cracks in there. And that cornstarch and baby powder will get in those cracks and you can't get it out. You know, so I've kind of had a problem with that. Um, so what I do, I have a, this spray bottle and it's got um, two or three drops of Dawn dish soap, which as we all know, cuts grease really well and water. And I just, I'm not going to do it right now because you're, if you're cleaning and prep your canvas for cells using this, you need to let it dry like at least for a day before you put resin on it, um, a day or two, because if, you know, obviously you can't have any water on the surface. So prep that and clean your canvases um, a couple of days before. Dawn dish soap and water and paper towel wipe and maybe do that two or three or four times and then let it set to dry before you start your resin. Um, if you're doing a second coat of resin, and I'm actually gonna try this today, I've never tried it before. Um, I've already resined this one, and I'm going to try to give you, in a minute, um, a close-up of the edge. Uh, on the first coat, because this is canvas, this isn't wood. Um, a wood panel is ideal for resining, but they're kind of costly, and um, I only resin my favorite paintings, and um, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a second coat, reason being the edge here. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but the edge, it doesn't have, it kind of separates away from that edge. So someone told me, and I'm going to try it out, that if you, for the second coat, because these sides already have um, resin on them from the first coat, tape it just a little bit off the lip like that. And so I'm going to go ahead and just give this a top coat of second coat of resin but it's been sitting around for a little while um, maybe a week so I'm just gonna take alcohol and clean this first coat of resin with alcohol I'm gonna do that real quick the alcohol will get rid of any oil from your fingers dust okay so big enemies of resin <laughs> dust pet hair Oh my gosh, huge enemies, dust and pet hair. If you have pets in your home, go to the room that's cleanest of pet hair. Most pet hair free that you can. Vacuum that day or the day before you're gonna resin. Um, but, you know, just try to do, see that's already good to go because of the alcohol. So I'm just making sure, and then that's gonna be dry by the time I get my resin. Okay, so gloves. You're gonna need, if you do it my method and with your hands, you're gonna go through some gloves. Um, you can double glove them. And the reason is I use my hands to put the resin on and then when I go to pick this up and to pop the bubbles, and you gotta really torch those bubbles really well. Um, then I have to take off one of my gloves. And so I go through quite a bit of gloves, which is also why I do a lot of resin at once. Today I need a resin two, four, six, seven. So I'm gonna do uh, seven canvases. I doubt I'll do them all on camera, but I don't know, I just might. But So gloves, I just keep the box right here ready to go and um, you know, it's not great for the environment, but um, you know, sometimes in order to get it done properly, I have to use a number of gloves. So keep that handy. Don't wear good clothes that you like. <laughs> wear an apron. Uh, this stuff gets on clothing. It does not come out. Also, pin your hair back. And don't get an itch with your, you know, resin on your gloves and get resin in your bangs like I did. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was a treat. I did get it out. It was still wet, but, and I had to really, but... Try not to get resin in your hair or on your clothes. Anyway, okay, what else? You're going to need a torch. I prefer the big torch, um, but if all you have is the little torch, as long as you've got enough butane to make sure all those bubbles are popped, 
then you should be fine. I just prefer this, it's faster and um, it's noisy though, but I don't mind. The last um, but not least very important thing is if you can get a box, like a cardboard box and cut the top off, when the resin is all on there, the safest way to let it dry is to get a bigger box that fits around it and cover that canvas overnight while it's drying. They also have these little net um, kind of tents that people use and I would love to get one um, because there's dust flying around in the air and it can land and it's not going to be, you'll, you'll be able to see that little hair, cat hair, that bug. You know, it's bug season right now with, season, with uh, summertime and, um, you know, so covering it to dry is the best way to go. I personally don't have those things and I just kind of risk it, but highly advised if you can. If you, if, I'm not selling these. I keep them for myself. So um, if I was selling them, I think I would be, you know, more of a perfectionist about it. And um, so, and then just make sure that your painting is the way you like it. Because, you know, once you put resin over it, you can't go, oh, I wish I had touched up that one spot. So anyway, so, yep, getting it all prepared. That's half the battle. Putting it on is very quick. And it's, it's actually really fun. It's really fun. So I'm going to get the camera ready. And I'm going to change my shirt because this is a good shirt. And I will be right back. Okay, here we go. Now this resin is called Stone Coat Art Coat, okay? So Ultra UV Protection. Stone Coat Countertops is the website. And th this is an, obviously the art coat made for what we're doing. Okay, so there's two parts to every resin. The, it's Part A, which is the resin, and Part B, which is the hardener. Um, these are one-to-one -one ratio. Getting the exact, you know, as very, very close to perfect as you can. If you don't put enough hardener in, it won't ever dry. It'll just stay wet. And that would be a nightmare, because <laughs> I don't even know how you would fix that. So what I do, there's two ways you can do it. You can use this is a measuring thing I got from Home Depot for a dollar. Love these things. And on this side here, hope you guys can see this. There's your ratios. So one to one, everything in these, see on the top there, it says one dot dot one. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of canvases today. So I'm gonna need a big cup full. So see where it says four and four? So that's probably ounces. Uh, no, it can't be ounces. Well, anyway, whatever it is, if I put part A up to that line right there, and then part B up to line, that line there, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. The other way to do it is uh, with a scale. You can weigh it, and that will be really, really exact. You know, you could put, I don't know, uh, 200 grams, plus another 200 grams would be, you know, of part A and then 200 grams of part B, and then mix it for three minutes, okay? Mix it for three minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that part, and let me get my glasses, because I don't wanna have any mistakes. Now, wear gloves when you're doing this because um, it's pretty sticky stuff. You can see how slow that comes out. It's very thick. And so when it starts getting close, back off. Okay, perfect. I got it right up to that line that says four. And then I take the hardener and exactly bring that up again. Back off. Let the let the measure do its thing. Okay. So that's that. 
Now, you set a timer for three minutes. I'm gonna look at the clock. Now, I'm gonna come back to you guys in three minutes. You don't have to watch me stir this. Okay, but scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. Stir, stir, stir with all your might, okay? This is super important, okay? That's why they wanna make sure that you do it. And it's gonna go from cloudy to clear with bubbles, okay? So that's normal, it turns clear. And I'll see you guys in three minutes. Okay, that is mixed. All right, here we go. Now this is the easy part. Like seriously, this is the easy part and the fun part. So you just pour it on. And I, I like to go around the edge. And that's gonna be a pretty good amount. That's probably gonna be enough. And I try to use my right hand for this part <laughs> keep my left hand clean but it doesn't always work out that way so once i get the top really good then what you can do is drizzle on the outside because this is a gallery wrap and i'm going to use that this to get the sides you can always add more which i am going to add a little more here be as thick. Your sides do not have to be as thick. Okay. So that's super nice. Now this is where I take off my right glove because I'm going to be torching it. Okay, so that's it. Um, now I'm gonna come back later. Also, I don't, I don't know if you guys noticed. Well, you probably didn't notice. I have a lot of windows. I got a huge window in front of me. I'm doing it at the brightest time of day next to that window because light is your friend with uh, resin. Um, you wanna be able to see those bubbles. If you're not in a brightly lit room, you turn on all the lights, you know, I'm not even kidding. Because if you miss a bubble, that would just be really, really suck. Look at that. Oh my God, I love it. <gasps> Look at how much the resin brings that out. Oh gosh, I just love it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this over here. That was super pretty. Okay, so this one I'm gonna do is, this is a second coat, I've already done one coat. And so for the second coat, I heard, um, because what happens is, this is canvas, not cradled wood, okay? And I'm gonna kinda try to show you this edge here. See how it's not as thick? You can actually see the pura, pur, porous canvas there, because it's canvas, it tends to dip in, okay? So it's not surprising that I need a second coat at all. If you wanna have that really glass on the edge, on canvas, you will most definitely have to do two coats. So this is the second coat. And instead of doing the sides again, I just taped this off, as you can see, to where it'll go right there and stop, and then I'll peel it off. And uh, so let's give this baby a second coat. 
I love this one. This was so much fun to do. I actually did another one in the same colors. It didn't come out quite as good, but oh my gosh, it's just the color combo. This was um, the neon pink, gold, and silver. And it, this stuff feels so cool. <laughs> I feel like a little kid when I'm smearing it around. It's just like really thick nail polish or something. Oh, by the way, there's no fumes. It doesn't get hot. This stuff does not smell. The paint smells more than this stuff smells. And I don't know. I mean, I know some resins, they recommend that you wear a mask. And you can if you're worried. But I don't, and I'm fine. There's nothing, no fumes or anything like that with this particular brand of uh, resin. Not all resins are the same. <laughs> okay, so I just want to make sure I get that edge enough. Because I don't want to have to do the third coat on this one. So I'm going to be going through a lot of gloves. What I normally do is, and it's difficult to do it because I'm filming today, is I'll go ahead and put three canvases side by side, um, about three inches apart, okay, because you're going to need to get to those sides with your hand, and if your canvases are too close together, you're not going to be able to have that space to go around like that. So, And then I'll go ahead and I'll pour resin on one and smear it around, pour resin on, and then I... Um, once I've got the resin on the three, because it's quick, then I torch all three, okay? And uh, don't use as many gloves <laughs> that way. Seeing a little problem area here. Those little problem areas, you know, they, they stand out. You'll see them. Oops. Oh, I need to put more resin on that spot. Like you can see, as long as your lighting is really good. And every time you add, the any more always torch again okay and um, you can take your finger and run around the edge and the side and stuff like that if you want but again like I said I taped my backs so I'm not really worried about those drips coming off the bottom because I'm going to peel that tape off. Okay, so this is a 14 by 14 canvas. Also, another thing I will not be able to answer is if you guys ask me how much resin, you know, it's resin calculator, but I guarantee you there is one somewhere. Um, how to know how much to mix up. I made this one, gosh, six months ago, and I love it, and it's weird how I moved it from one point of the house to another point of the house, and I thought, you know, I love that one so much, I need to put a coat of resin over it. So here we are. Now, if your canvas is drooping, like this one is, <laughs> um, you can take precautions um, by putting like something on the back to support it because ideally resining canvas is not the way. Ideally a wood panel is the way because of its leveling features. But what'll happen is it's gonna have more, the resin's gonna run to the center if it's sagging. Now you can, you know, eventually fill that up with more resin, but resin's kinda costly. So, but I mean, some of my favorite paintings I put on canvas and, you know, you can't, these are unique. So, I do whatever I can, and uh, this is looking pretty. Yay. 
It's so satisfying resining your favorite's work. It's just so very satisfying. It's, it's such a finish. Uh, it's such a beautiful finish. Just making sure all my edges are nice and gooey. And you can feel it. It kind of slows down if you can feel where it is with your fingers. Maybe that's why I like to use my hands. Is I can really tell. Yeah, this. Um, also, I use a wet rag. Um, paper towels is not going to be your friend with resin. Um, so it does ruin the rag. You're not going to be able to wash it out, but it does get enough of it off of your hands so you can... sideways let that window reflection be my friend and I see a spot right here that's not covered right there anywhere else anywhere else looks really good so every time you add some like I just did there there's gonna be bubbles so hit it again Isn't this a nice one? I don't have a video on this one. This was leftover paint. Some of the best paintings I've done has just been leftover paint. <laughs> so nice. Okay, what's up next? Let's see. Oh yeah, this one. This was a pretty one that I was dying to see resined. Just did the video for this one. I do have this one. Again, this was the Martha Stewart Pearl Paints, and it just jumps out with this over it. Oh my gosh. I knew it. I knew it. this would look amazing resin. I tend to resin when I know my kids are going to be, like, gone. <laughs> You know, preferably like spending the night at a friend's house or whatever, because it's the least amount of people in the house, um, the better. Just because of hair and dust and, you know, going in and out of the front door, things like that. And using that window glare is my friend. Oh my gosh. I don't see much. I see little bubbles here on this corner. If you use reading glasses like I do, you will be needing them. Oh, that looks so pretty. Oh my God, I love that one. Oh yeah, that's right. I haven't posted the video on this. I'll have to dig that out of the thing and do it. This is all the pearl paints as well. So let's see. how this is going to look. Metallics always look really amazing. Pearl paints, that kind of stuff with resin over it. Oh my gosh, really. Look at that. I almost forgot about this one. God, that blue. I wanted, I did a dirty flip cup on this with the Martha Stewart paint, pearl paints and the colors didn't mix. 
that's what I was testing out. It didn't seem to mix. That was super cool. I, the thing is, is like, I can't find it <laughs> to buy it. So, and Amazon is asking $9 for two ounces of that blue color. I mean, $9 for two ounces of paint. All right, last but not least, uh, this one's been hanging in my bathroom for months, and I'm gonna give it a coat of resin. It deserves it, especially since it's in the bathroom, right? But uh, it's got these crazy cells in this one. This is that cool. Check it out. Dragon scales. Game of Thrones. <laughs> anyway, let's give her a beautiful coat. I'm at the very end of my pile of resin in my cup. So that kind of worked out perfect. I'm not gonna have too much extra. If I do have extra, I, I will not throw it out. I mean, like, unless it's just the tiniest bit and it will not, I'll find a tiny canvas somewhere that I can put it on. Just love the finished look of resin. It's not for all paintings though. I do have a couple paintings that I just feel like resin would not um, look good on. And uh, I've opted to keep those resin free. Well, since I got a little bit left, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on there. If it doesn't, it'll run off the sides um, or just make it a thicker coat. Give this one a nice, beautiful, thick coat. I hope you guys learned something today and uh, you know if you're you've never resin before and you decide to um, I highly recommend the stone coat now I don't work for them or anything I'm not some you know spokesperson for them I just use the product and I like it so um, I can see you right there. Now this is a something I used um, spot on treadmill and I'm only seeing one right now but there's a spot right there where it's resisting. And so far that's all I can see. Sometimes more will pop up over an hour time span but um, Probably the next time I do a batch of resin, I'll go ahead and do a second coat on this one. Because if there's going to be one, I guarantee you there's going to be another one. <laughs> but that's the nature of having cells. But like I said, a couple of coats and you'll be fine. You know, don't freak out. Okay, everyone, so there they are. Got a little drying spot. This is one of my rooms that doesn't get used that often. 
and uh, it's the perfect place for these to dry. I wish I had a big tent I could put over them, but um, yeah, there they are. So pretty. Second coat for this baby. And I'm going to come in here and uh, check with my torch and check for bubbles. I will hit it again with the torch to check for bubbles. But yeah. And what was that, 45 minutes it took me to do um, seven paintings? And if I didn't have to talk to you guys, it would have taken me even less time. <laughs> so it's pretty quick. Quick and easy, guys, and it is so, so worth it. So, anyway, I hope you guys learned something. I hope I helped a lot. You know, I'm not an expert, but um, sometimes people just need a little bit of a push to say, oh, it's not that hard. If Christine can do it, then I can do it too. <laughs> Hi everyone. So uh, these are all dry and I wanted to show you the results. Um, the non-silicone canvases, these three, one, two, three, uh, in particular, came out perfect. No problems at all. Um, I took off the tape. The back is super clean, no drips. And these worked out the best in the bunch. Now I just wanted to show you on one of them. This is how the back looks and this is hard as a rock. Okay, so yeah. All you gotta do is peel that tape off and it comes right off. And uh, you know, it can be a little bit picky, but it comes off fairly easy. <laughs> Watch it not do that now that I'm trying to be fast. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, so. Sometimes you just gotta, there it goes. See how that comes off nice and easy. It's a little bit picky, but you definitely can get a super clean back, just like this one. Yeah, the first three, I did seven all together. Um, now this one was the one that I did the second coat on and I taped around the edge and tragedy struck. Um, the blue painter's tape that I used, when I peeled it off, it not only took off part of the resin, but it took off the edge of the, where the pink flower um, rolls over, and it ripped it. It took the paint off. So that experiment went bad, and I actually can't even get this blue off. What I'm going to do to fix it, and believe me, I'm bummed out about it. Um, is I'm gonna have to sand this down, just sand it down until it's all solid white. The front of the picture is still beautiful. It's not ruined, it's just messed up my edges. So in the future, I will never be putting tape over um, resin again. Um, so I learned my lesson and you guys learn from me, don't make that mistake. And I'm not gonna mention the YouTuber that suggested that. Um, maybe it worked for her. Maybe it was the type of tape I used. Uh, who knows? Anyway, the uh, silicone paintings. This one came out perfect. Came out perfect. And this is a different type of silicone that I used. Um, some stuff I got from Germany. And it didn't have any resistance po pockets or anything like that. Now this one a lot of resistant pockets here and it's very difficult to see um, and get it on camera but essentially it's a resistant spot here 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 there's like five of them and then there's one little one on this side so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sand it down um, because and clean it really good with Dawn dish soap, make sure there's no oil on it, and re-pour the resin on this, okay? So that's the reason a lot of people don't use resin on silicone paintings. Now this one's almost perfect, but it's got one resistant spot down here. One spot. Other than that, or no, I'm sorry, two. So this edge, there's one, and there's one there too. And 
difficult to get it on camera, but it does kind of show in person those kind of like a bald spot, I guess. So all in all, um, I know I can get these two fixed and, um, but I'm really happy with the batch. Really, really happy. Let me know if you guys have any questions and if I can answer them, I will do my best. And I hope that this gives you some confidence to try resin on your paintings. And uh, make sure you clean those canvases before you put resin on them if you've used silicone. So anyway, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, if you like this video, like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you guys next time. Bye now.